Igor's life has been vibrant and eventful since childhood. His father was a military man, so they often moved as a family. Igor enjoyed these relocations, although his mother always protested and demanded they settle down somewhere for good. Her dream came true when the country fell apart. At that time, Igor's father was serving in the Urals and decided to remain there. However, Igor dreamed of St. Petersburg. He had never been there, but he longed to visit the northern capital. After graduating from university, he decided to pursue his dreams and moved to the city of his dreams. His parents tried to dissuade him, but to no avail, and Igor didn't regret his decision. Initially, he worked for a construction company. Then took a risk and started his own. The construction business proved to be very successful and in demand, and in a short time, Igor was able to build himself a house in an elite neighborhood. Igor wanted to bring his parents to live with him, but his mother adamantly refused. She was tired of moving and didn't want to relocate again. Despite this, his parents were proud of his achievements, the only thing that saddened them was that Igor still hadn't started a family despite being 40 years old. But his parents' dreams were unexpectedly fulfilled. Before New Year's, Igor arrived at his parents with a girlfriend, introducing her as his bride. Ekaterina was a very sweet and pleasant girl. One thing puzzled his relatives, she was 18 years younger than Igor. His father tried to talk to him, explaining that the age difference was too significant, but Igor was firm. Dad, I've met the girl of my dreams. It's not my fault that my dream came true when I was 18. We love each other, and that's what matters. What if she's with you for money? You see how materialistic young people are these days. I see, of course, but Ekaterina is not like that at all, I'm sure of it. Well, be careful not to regret later that she'll be squeezing money out of you while having a younger admirer on the side and keeping him on your dime. Dad, come on, seriously. I'm not 80, I'm perfectly capable of managing myself. Let's drop it, please, we came to visit, not to argue. All right, as you wish, it's my duty to warn you. Igor remembered this conversation now, a year and a half after marrying Katya, because the day before, his wife's driver informed him that Ekaterina seemed to be cheating on him. She regularly went to the same place. Igor couldn't believe it. He loved his wife and felt that she loved him too. Why would she do this? Igor asked himself for the twentieth time. What could she be lacking? We're intimate almost every day. I'm a bit tired, but I understand that it's her age and she desires it, but I don't understand why she would lack that. His contemplation was interrupted by the culprit herself, Ekaterina. She entered her husband's office and sat down next to him on the armrest of his chair. Igor, let's go somewhere today. Sure, where do you want to go? I don't know, I want to go to the movies, haven't been in a while, are you okay with that? I'm fine with it. Then I'll check where they're showing what, you get the tickets. Ekaterina pecked her husband on the cheek and fluttered out of the room. Igor watched his wife leave. But it can't be that she's cheating, or I really don't understand people, Igor thought. In the evening, they went to the movies, then sat in a restaurant. When they returned, Ekaterina began to flirt with Igor herself. Later, Igor decided to ask. Ekaterina. Tell me, am I satisfying you as a man? Ekaterina even jumped in surprise. What kind of silly questions? Of course, you do, a hundred percent. Do you doubt it? No, just asking. We have an age difference, maybe you're missing something. Igor, what nonsense. You outshine any man younger than you, stop talking nonsense. I don't need anyone but you. Igor so wanted to believe his wife's words, but a tiny seed of doubt gnawed at him inside. Cat, can I ask you something? Anything. If by any chance you fall in love with someone else or just stop loving me, don't lie to me. Just come and tell me the truth. Deal. Ekaterina was genuinely surprised by such a request. Igor, you scare me with such requests. 
did I give you any reason to think that way? No, just promise you'll do it. All right, I promise, even though I don't understand anything. The next day, Igor spoke to his wife's driver again. Tell me, are you sure she's visiting another man? Maybe it's some salon or meeting with a friend? I don't know, the driver honestly said. Usually, we go to the supermarket, Ekaterina picks up a few bags of groceries, and we go to the same address. She doesn't allow me to accompany her upstairs to her apartment, she carries all the bags herself. I found it very strange, so I told you. Igor also found such behavior strange. But if she's going to a friend's, then why can't Volodya, the driver, help carry the groceries? That means she doesn't want him to see who she's visiting. And what does that mean? That she has something to hide. Igor was upset again. Yesterday he was sure that everything was fine in their relationship, and now he was doubting again. Volodya, how often does Ekaterina go to this address? Twice a week, sometimes three, she's supposed to go there again tomorrow, she already told me. All right, I'll think of something. Maybe record it on video, and then you can show her the recording and ask where she's going. No, that's definitely not necessary. I'll think about what to do. Igor thought all day and eventually came up with a plan. He would disguise himself and pretend to be Volodya's replacement. The new driver. That's the only way he could check where his Ekaterina was going. The next day, when Ekaterina left the house in the morning, the car with the driver was already in the yard. Ekaterina, as usual, got into the back seat, greeted, and spoke to the driver. Volodya, let's go to the world, as usual, but on the way, drop me off at the market. Good morning, Ekaterina. Volodya is sick, I'm replacing him. Igor said with difficulty, changing his voice. Where to in the world? Ekaterina, without even turning to the driver's voice and continuing to look out the window, corrected, I'm sorry, to 27, Mira Street, but before that, let's stop by the supermarket, it'll be on the way. All right, the driver obediently said and started the car. Everything else happened as Volodya described. Ekaterina went into the supermarket, she was gone for about 40 minutes, then she loaded three huge bags of groceries into the trunk. When Igor was putting the bags in the trunk, he glanced at them. Mostly dairy products, meat, sausage, cereals, vegetables, and lots of different candies. Some sweet tooth, Igor smiled. They arrived at the designated house. Ekaterina got out of the car. You don't need to come with me, I'll manage myself. Wait for me in the car. I'm sorry, Ekaterina, but I have to escort you. Boss's orders. But I said, no, not necessary. Dot. If Igor asks. Say that you were escorted. But that's a lie. I don't want to lose my job if the boss finds out that I didn't escort you. Ekaterina began to get angry. If you keep your mouth shut, he won't find out anything, Ekaterina said confidently and got out of the car. She took the bags from the trunk and entered the entrance. A couple of minutes later, Igor got out of the car and also headed for the entrance. He heard the door of the apartment on the fourth floor close. Great, I'll have to visit the owner of this den, Igor thought. Ekaterina came out of the entrance fifty minutes later. She was as calm and composed as before visiting this house. All right, let's see who you're visiting there. Igor thought angrily. He drove the landlady home and went to the same address again, getting rid of the makeup on the way. When he reached the desired floor, Igor wondered which apartment to ring. His heart was pounding in his temples. He was really scared to find out now that his wife was a traitor. But he couldn't not find out. He reached out and pressed the doorbell of one of the apartments. No one opened the door. He approached another apartment and rang the bell. After a few seconds, he heard footsteps, then the sound of the lock. The door opened, and there stood a man no less than seventy years old. Hello, I'm from the insurance company, conducting a survey. Can you spare me a couple of minutes? 
Igor improvised on the spot. Good afternoon. Yes, of course, come in. Igor entered the apartment. The man pointed to the living room and invited him in. Upon entering the room, Igor immediately saw several photos of his wife in frames. So everything is correct. But I will never believe in my life that my Ekaterina is having an affair with this old man. What did you want to ask? We're conducting a campaign for lonely elderly people. We offer to arrange a policy at a favorable price. Tell me, do you have any relatives? Do you live alone? I only have a granddaughter, Ekaterina. But she doesn't live with me. She's married and lives with her husband. She's a very good girl. I raised her myself and put her on her feet. When my son and daughter-in-law died, Katia was only six years old. I couldn't send her to an orphanage, so I decided to manage on my own. And we lived together, just the two of us. And recently she got married, for love, but to a wealthy man. And you know what they're like. What are they like? Igor became interested. Well, what are they like? Important, intellectual. I told my granddaughter right away, don't tell your husband about me. I don't want to be an obstacle on the path to your happiness. She doesn't forget about me, she comes, often helps with groceries. I know she loves me and everything is good. Igor was surprised. So, does it mean Ekaterina thought Igor would be against her grandfather? Or would she be embarrassed by her background? But he already knew she came from a poor family. It didn't matter to him, the main thing was that they loved each other. He even felt offended that his wife thought that way about him. Have you ever seen her husband? Wouldn't you be interested to see who your only granddaughter lives with? I haven't seen him. But Ekaterina said he's a very good person, and she loves him very much. And he loves her. And that's the main thing. When there's love, young man, everything else is nonsense. Trust my experience. I'm sorry, what's your name? Me? Igor Ivanovich, the grandfather said. Nice to meet you, Igor Ivanovich. My name is Igor, and I'm your granddaughter's spouse. Just don't be angry with me. I accidentally found out about your existence. Ekaterina didn't say anything. The driver who brings her to you told me. Igor Ivanovich narrowed his eyes and looked with interest at the man. Then he smiled and said, he probably thought my Ekaterina was cheating, right? But she's not like that. She's honest and decent. I never doubted it. I was just curious to understand where she goes so often. And it was wrong of you and Katia not to tell me that Katia has a grandfather. I may be well off, but I'm not a stuck-up oligarch who considers other people trash. That's very good. Well, nice to meet you, Igor. Igor Ivanovich, I have a business proposal for you. Igor told the grandfather what he had come up with. Igor Ivanovich initially refused. But eventually accepted Igor's offer. Ekaterina was preparing dinner when her husband called and said he would be home earlier than usual today. Great. I'm so glad when you come home early. We can spend more time together. But I won't be alone today. We have guests. So set the festive table. This is a very dear and desired guest. Who? Ekaterina was surprised. Usually her husband warned her about guests in advance and didn't like unexpected visits himself. Ekaterina, I'm driving. It's inconvenient to talk. I'll be there soon, you'll find out. I'll introduce you. Ekaterina was an impatient girl and didn't like intrigues and pranks at all. But there was nothing to do. She had to wait. She quickly set the table, made a couple more salads, and ran upstairs to change. When Ekaterina came down in a beautiful dress, Igor was just entering the house. Ekaterina ran up to her husband and hugged him. When will the guests arrive, she asked impatiently. The guest is already here. But I don't know how to properly introduce him to you. 
Igor deliberately delayed. He knew Ekaterina was burning with impatience. And this was his little revenge for what he had endured over the past few days. This person did the impossible, and I respect him very much for that. Ekaterina listened, spellbound. She was very interested to know who it was. Igor, can you introduce us already? Why are you dragging it out? What did this person do that was so important, his wife was getting angry. Igor took Katya's hand and led her to the courtyard to the car. What did this person do? Igor repeated and approached the car. This person gave me the most precious and dear person, you. Ekaterina was stunned and looked at her husband. Then she pulled the door handle and saw her grandfather. She looked from her husband to her grandfather and didn't understand anything. Igor, explain what's going on. How do you know my grandfather? Grandpa, how did you get here? Igor Ivanovich slowly got out of the car. Ekaterina, don't worry, everything's fine. We'll tell you everything now. Igor Ivanovich, take Katya and come into the house, and I'll take your things, Igor said in the tone of a host. Ekaterina didn't understand anything at all. They went into the house. When everyone was sitting at the table, Igor honestly told the whole story, starting with Volodya the driver's suspicions. During the story, Ekaterina alternated between getting angry, being surprised, and laughing. But in the end, of course, she was glad that she no longer had to hide and lie to her husband. Igor offered the grandfather to live with them, and he accepted the invitation. In the evening, when the grandfather went to bed in his room, and the spouses were alone, Igor asked, Ekaterina, there's just one thing I don't understand. Why didn't you tell me you had a grandfather? There's nothing wrong with that. I don't know. At first, Grandpa asked me not to tell anyone about him. I agreed, and then I just couldn't tell you. And it would have seemed strange. So I had to visit him secretly. I couldn't abandon him, he's my relative. Besides you, I have no one else. Forgive me, Igor, I understand it turned out stupid. And thank you so much for bringing Grandpa to us. It'll be much easier for me. Don't apologize, everything's fine. Just don't do that again. Otherwise, this lack of communication leads to such consequences. I've got a bunch of gray hairs while I was trying to figure out where you were going. I promise, no more secrets and puzzles, Ekaterina said, gently hugging Igor. Ding Igor. Ding Igor. 